The question is, what is the best stitch for beginners to learn? I'm going to do one better. I'm going to give you what I think are the top 10 stitches all beginners should know. Hey, it's Denise from Lumahead.com. Let's dive right in. Let's start with the ever-present knit stitch. And this little guy is a bit different in that there's actually four versions of this stitch. And I will give you a quick explanation of each one. If you want more detail, then I'll give you a link in the description to the full video. It's called Knit Stitch on a Loom, all four versions. And I want to give you guys a heads up that I will not be showing you how to cast on because projects, not stitch patterns, determine how we start. So pick your favorite cast on and let me explain the e-wrap for you. With your working yarn, so you're going to take it from behind, you're going to bring it forward and you're wrapping the peg. Okay, from the back to the front and you wrap. And that forms an E, which is where the E wrap gets its name. So you're wrapping each peg, right? And now you're left with a loop on the bottom and one in the top. And what you're gonna do is you take your pick and you lift the bottom over the top and to the back, which is called of course it doesn't want to do it. That's called a knit off. That's it. That's the E-wrap. Now let's take a look at the U-wrap version. Okay, and basically just like the E-wrap, it gets its name by uh, what you do with your working yarn when you wrap your pegs. You're going to half wrap the peg, which forms that U and it of course you can't go to all of them. You're gonna do them one at a time. You're gonna bring your loop from the bottom over the top. Okay, and then you're gonna to go to your next one. You're gonna take your working yarn and you're gonna go from the front to the back, but you're not gonna completely wrap the peg. And you go to the next one and half wrap, bottom over the top. Go to the next one, half wrap bottom over the top. Is that cool or what? I love this stitch. That's the U-wrap. Not my favorite for beginners, but you should also learn the flat version. All right, so like the others, it takes its name from the way you're using your working yarn, the way you're placing it on your peg. And uh, it is placed on each peg flat. And all you're gonna do is, you're gonna put that flat working yarn over the loop that's already on your peg and then just take that bottom loop over the top and knit off. That's all you're doing. Bottom over top, bottom over top, bottom over top. Last but not least, the true version. You're going to take your working yarn and you're going to put it above the existing loop. You're going to take your hook and bring it up through that existing bottom loop and scoop up your working yarn to create a loop. Now you take the one that you already had on the peg, take that loop off the peg, put the new one and pull on your working yarn. Again, you're gonna put that working yarn above the existing loop, take your hook, come from the bottom, scoop up that working yarn to create a new loop Take the old loop off, put the new loop on. And as, as I said, this one does take a little more effort than the other ones. Um, but for some people, they just love it. It's, uh, it's worth that extra effort to get the results um, of having a, a nice stitch that is loose without being too loose and where the detail of your stitch is really clear. You see that? You can clearly see a nice stitch there. So if you're a true blue kind of person, then you're gonna like this uh, true stitch. And like I said, on most uh, patterns, when they don't say what kind of knit stitch, this is what they're wanting you to do. All right, that's the true or otherwise known as classic knit stitch. Keep in mind that your choice of the knit stitch version can have a huge effect on the fabric of your project. 
All right, guys, time to move to the next stitch. It's the pearl. To do this stitch, you're going to take your working yarn and put it under the existing loop and then get your hook. And with your hook, you're going to come to the top. And from there, you're going to scoop up the existing loop and you're going to create a new loop. See it right here? That's the new loop. You need to take off the existing loop, put on the new loop, and pull on your working yarn in order to tighten that loop. My next favorite stitch for you guys is the rib stitch, which is actually a combination of the knit and purl stitch, and very often used for brims on a hat. So how do you do this? You pick a version of the knit stitch at your purl and put them side by side. Let me show you this in action. So for this hat, which I'm doing the rib stitch brim, I'm using the U wrap version of the knit stitch. So I half wrap my peg and then knit off. And my next peg, I'm going to do a purl. So I get my hook. I scoop up my yarn. I create a new loop right here. Take the old one off and put the new one on and tighten my string and I repeat that. Let's see that up close. Again, I'm going to half wrap my peg and knit off for the knit stitch and the next one that follows is a purl stitch. You guys already know how to do this. And my next one again because it's a two stitch combination is a knit stitch and I follow that with a purl stitch and I continue to do that knit one purl one knit one purl one this is called a single rib stitch and there are many combinations of the rib stitch you can do two knits and two purls three knits and two purls three purls and three knits on and on and on but you guys get the idea all right let's go to the next one like the rib stitch, the next one is also a combination of a knit and purl. It's called a garter stitch. But I want you to notice where the little guys are situated. The rib stitch is one next to the other, right? First a knit, then a purl, then a knit, and a purl. The garter stitch is different in that they're rows. So one full row of knit and one full row of purl. Keeping in mind that Picking the version of the knit stitch is going to change the look of this garter stitch. How about we show you real quick how to do it. In the case of this project, I chose the E-wrap as my version of the knit stitch. And so I'm wrapping all of my pegs. And by the way, you could do an E-wrap one peg at a time, three pegs at a time, doesn't matter. But when I finished that row, I then have to do a row of the purl stitch because remember that with the garter stitch it's one row of knit and one row of purl so here I finished the purl stitch right and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mess up a few times first but eventually I'm going to get it right and I'm going to do another row of knit stitch and after this row I'll do a row a row of purl Number eight to me is more of a technique than a stitch. It's called a yarn over and you usually see it in your pattern as a capital Y and a capital O. And how do you do this? Well, say it tells you to do the yarn over on peg number three. Well, you're going to take that stitch, existing stitch, and you're going to move it over. And then that's going to leave you an empty peg. And you might wonder, well, why would I want an empty peg? If you're needing an eyelet right like a little hole in your pattern which is something I needed when I did my yarn holder um, purse and when I did my eyeglasses because I needed a buttonhole so if you're using a large gauge loom which just means you have a lot of space between one peg and the other like I did when I did this scarf and I wanted large holes in it I had to use the e-wrap version of the knit stitch and that's because with a large gauge loom you need your fabric well you need your stitch to be able to stretch over to the next one and with an e-wrap when you remove it from the peg you can unravel 
that e-wrap stitch and that's going to make it possible for you to go ahead and move it to the other side and that's going to leave you that empty peg and what can you do with that empty peg you can wrap it like you would wrap an e-wrap or in my case for this particular stage stitch i just wanted to put the yarn right over the peg that is your yarn over and the effect of that on the next peg is what I'm going to tell you how to do stitch number nine. The knit two together usually shows up in pattern as a K2TOG. And how do you do that? Well, you remember when you did the yarn over and you took that stitch and you moved it over to the next stitch? Well, when you do that, you notice that there's two stitches instead of one under. So all you're going to do is with your hook, you're going to take those two stitches together and you're going to knit off. Now it can be problematic sometimes, so you don't have to panic and feel like you have to do those two together. You can actually do them one at a time and it's still a knit two together. My next stitch would be the P2 together, which is the same stitch. You're just going to purl them together instead of knitting. Do you remember all 10 of those stitches? Four knit stitches, a purl, a rib, a garter, the yarn over, the knit two together, a purl two together. All right guys, share this video because it helps me a lot and remember to love with your looms.